In today's episode of The Living Philosophy, I want to talk about an aspect of the, the Irish psyche that is really fascinating to me and that I see so well mirrored in the, the music of Bell X1 and in the, the poetry of Patrick Kavanagh. And it's this really, it's the, the, the poetry of the prosaic, uh, is, is one way of thinking about it, that it's the, the, the it's finding such beauty and the eternity within the, the most mundane things and there's something almost purer about that than something like we'll say Yeats or U2 the kind of a something which is much more uh, affected and, and noble uh, in, in, in their kind of things in that, in that Yeatsian U2 strain of, of, of the Irish psyche compared with this Bell X1 Patrick Kavanagh kind of thing which is much more I feel much more earthy and there's something I, I still haven't fully wrapped my head around within it that is just so beautiful and I think that that tension comes from the, the, the two aspects within the, the Irish psyche so I've always felt that the, the Irish psyche was, was a divide with one hand in heaven and, and one hand firmly planted in the earth and this weird I guess I guess it's it's you can see it as the, the product of our history in the sense of we are a people that are have been very very religious very very catholic and on the other hand very much an agricultural nation very much a, a rural nation and so it's it's that connection to the earth which I've always loved in Patrick Kavanagh and that I see really Bell X1 as being the the kind of inheritors of that the, the transmitters of that and it's, it's so it's so beautiful so even on this idea of this distinction between the the two poles of the Irish psyche there's a great line in one of the one of Bell X1's songs called The Trailing Skirts of God which is kind of about uh, our relationship to our religion in, in the modern Irish psyche and in the song he he's starts off the first verse is having his holy communion and then the, the second verse is going through his confirmation and taking that promise and I promise to abstain from intoxicating liquor but the flesh it is weak and my faith was never stronger and I think that that captures it so well it's that, that tension between the, the faith and the flesh that is that is that that distinction within Irish society and I think that that's something so beautiful I guess you could look at it even within alcohol alcohol is you call it spirits you know and spirits are you know there's, there's the Holy Spirit but also there's the, the complete earthiness of alcohol of the it, it makes you into a bit of a loon a bit of a you go you go a bit mad you go a bit wild and it's 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 that thing of you become much more human through alcohol and yet it's the spirit it can also release you of your your inhibitions and transport you to to a different state of consciousness and, and a, in some sense it's a higher state of consciousness I guess in, in a Dionysian kind of orgiastic kind of way and something tangled up in that that I see with Bell X1 and with, with Patrick Kavanagh that's so beautiful so Patrick Kavanagh has this one poem called Pilgrims which I think is just such a it's 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 such a, a blend of everything Irish he's got the, the humour in there he's got the religion and he's got that earthiness and so here's here's how it goes I saw them kneeling by the holy well it was for life 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 they prayed life that for a farmer is land enough to keep two horses Life that is a healthy husband to a maid. I saw them climbing the holy mountain. It was the knowledge, knowledge, knowledge of life they pursued. Knowledge that is in knowing what fare to sell the cattle in. Knowledge that has been able to cart an acre from a field. I saw them lying on the burning stones. It was vision, vision, vision they desired. Vision that is forecasting a mare's hour of falling. Vision that is catching the idler newly hired. I saw them kneeling, climbing and prostrate. It was love, love, love they found. Love that is Christ green walking from the summer headlands to his scarecrow cross in the turnip ground. And that last image of that poem, I think, is just a cracker. This idea of Christ <laughs> walking across the field to uh, take up the place of the scarecrow. And it's, it's, such a, it's such a beautiful combination of that, that Irish wit, that Irish religiousness and the earthiness of, of looking to protect your, protect your crops and protect your field. It's, it's so um, inspiringly earthy. And it's that mix of the, it's prosaic because it's such everyday things, you know, they're, they're, they're thinking about the, the idler on the, on the farm. They're thinking about carting an, carting an acre from the field. What, what fair to sell the cattle in and the uh, protecting the turnips from the scarecrow. They're such everyday prosaic kind of things. But in taking that and turn it into poetry, it, it kind of, it eternalizes that. It, it captures something that is true about humans always and everywhere. And in some sense, that's much more rich in truth and beauty than noble ideals about angels and higher love and God that is the, the oneness and the, the non-dualism. 
or enlightenment. You know, it's, it's, it's these things which are very lofty and which you'll find much more in Yeats. You'll find much more in the, the lyrics of, of some, someone like you too. But there's something in this earthiness, the, the prosaic poetry that is just, it's something that's eternal that can appeal to all humans everywhere because it's, it captures, it gets closer to the human condition itself. And in the, the very details of the individualism, the very most personal details. And Brene Brown is such a great source for this, talking about how you reveal your, what you think I thought it was just me and the things that are so personal turn out to be the most universal because humans were all more or less wired the same we've got the same insecurities and but the, the, those same insecurities tell us we're different tell us we're special tell us that this is unique when in fact there are uniquenesses shared our uniqueness is is common to all and I think that's something so fascinating I still haven't fully wrapped my head around it but it's 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 it fascinates me and I've just kind of been circling it a lot recently and so been listening to more of Bell X1 again recently and they're one of my favorite bands ever they're just the the lyricism is just so it's it's amazing I think their lyrics are all written by the the singer Paul Noonan and just they are just some of them are, are amazing uh, there's one line that I remember from when I was a teenager they had a great song uh, from called The Great Defector and this is just another one of those those lines but it's 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 updated to the to the modern reality of prosaic poetry and the line was just that you're the chocolate at the end of my cornetto and it's such a you know, a cornetto, that's, you never find a cornetto in Yeats. I don't think you'll ever find a cornetto in a U2 song. But we all know what that's about. If you've ever had a cornetto, you kind of know you're, ah, oh, looking forward to that last bit, you know, and there's something so uh, immediately personal about that, but it's also universal. You know, it's something so prosaic, but it's the, 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 the universal feelings that wrap around that prosaicness. And it's the meeting between eternity and the finitude of the present moment. And that's just something so beautiful there. But I want to explore one of their songs in a little bit more detail. So this is a, a song off the sale, same album as, as that one, the, the, the Great Defector. And this song is, is called Light Catches Your Face. And I'll just read the first couple of verses and just uh, explore that a little bit. The dog-eared disprin in your handbag, a gathering of crumbs and twenty fags. I'd steal some chewing gum, a few stray coins. I'm sure you noticed, but didn't much mind. Here I am, in the condiment aisle. I'm worried about my basil from Israel and New World wine. I need to lose these poses, reset my charms, to when I left the factory in your arms and this this song is is for for years i i thought it was just a, a standard love song but then whenever i sat down to listen to the lyrics i was like ah oh, i think this is about like his his mother i think this is this is like a really because you think about that that initial imagery so he's, he's looking in a woman's handbag and there's a, a dog eared disparin disparin is like this uh this painkiller medication comes in like sachets you dissolve it in water like salpidine i guess and so there's like a dog eared disparin and there's a gathering of crumbs there's 20 fags and there's chewing gum and a few stray coins and he takes the chewing gum and the stray coins and there's the there's so much context to that they say that uh what is it? An image says a thousand words, and I, I don't think in, in in two thousand words I could unpack everything within that image because there's a there's first of all there's the presumption of it's it's he's going through some so he's going through this this handbag and it's just the it's not like he's furtively looking it's not like he's trying to uncover a secret as so much of looking in someone's handbag is in in media it's it's something so again prosaic it's so every day he's looking through the handbag and describing what he sees there and it's not like he's he's looking for something what does he take it's not like he takes a load of money he takes a few stray coins and a, and a bit of chewing gum and there's just i just i just can't get my mind around how, how beautiful that is because it's such a presumption of how close you have to be for someone for them to not mind so what does he say he says uh I steal some chewing gum, a few stray coins. I'm sure you noticed, but didn't much mind. And for that to not be a violation, for that not to be, how dare you break into my handbag? It's just that closeness of a, of a mother and a son. It's, it's that thing of like, I feel like even within a relationship, you'd be like, hey, what are you doing taking stuff from my handbag? Yeah, maybe in a lot of relationships, that'd be fine. But it's, it's the, the unconditional love of, of a parent for a child. And I think it's, probably the only place where unconditional love is appropriate. So there's, there's, there's so much context there within the fact of why is it okay for him to be going through someone's handbag? And why is, why is he only taking some chewing gum and a free, few stray coins? It's just this, it's, it's so everyday 
that taps into that eternal thing of like the the relationship between uh, a parent and a child that's been around for you know as as long as humanity so sure it's not talking about the loftiness of you think of you two's one and love is the higher law and it's yeah it's like there's such beauty and it's 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 very lofty in in that sense but the, there's something within this which is so so much more eternal i feel it's it's the meeting between infinity and 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 the ultimate finitude the ultimate the most personal finite a uh, peculiar thing of of a mother's handbag and a gathering of crumbs and twenty fags and it's that meeting of eternity and 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 the present that is so beautiful and so there's so much I feel contained within that and in the second verse then he kind of goes on and he's, he's saying here I am in the condiment aisle I'm looking at this basil from Israel new world wine I need to lose these poses reset my charms to when I left the factory in your arms and we're seeing there the these things of we grow up we become adults and we take on these notions you know it's it's this idea of, you know, you get, you get worried about things like, oh, will I get the, you know, avocado? And it, they're so, they're so passing, they're so fleeting in some sense, and just, just such fads on a cultural level, and we'll probably get a lot more airtime on a cultural level, thinking about, you know, basil from Israel, New World wine, and it, it, these are these things of symbols of globalized culture and so much of civilization and, and our modern worlds that are so sophisticated and, and to become sophisticated cultural individuals, you know, using, oh yes, I'm using fresh basil, of course, and I've got uh, an Argentinian wine. And so he's just saying, I need to lose these poses and reset my charms. And that, that thing of the, when I left the factory in your arms, that's coming out of the hospital in his mother's arms, you know, that's, it's that thing of being a child. It's, it's such a different experience. It's such a different worldview. And there's that eternal relationship between the mother and child there. So it's, he's kind of tapping into that, which is just, it's just, it's so, such a beautiful way of, of saying it again. Basil from Israel and New World Wine is the things we can all relate to. These are all things we're partaking in. This is a shared culture that we have. And yet we all know it's, it's kind of this illusory thing. It's, they're, they're great symbols of this illusory world of fake first world problems that we have. So there's such beauty in that. And you could probably see, I could go much deeper into that. Maybe I'll do a video where I just explore that song, but you can see that, that connection there with, with Kavanaugh and with Bell X1, how they, they're so, there's such a, a groundedness in, in the everyday, in the prosaic, in the quotidian with, within their, within their writings, within their, their music. And there's something, there's something really Irish about that because the, the Irish psyche is, is, it's that pure earthiness and Irish humor is, is so much like that. We keep grounding ourselves. Anyone who starts to get notions, you know, they're easy to take the piss out of. So it's, it's very much, um, it can be infuriating sometimes. I used to find it infuriating when I was trying to puff myself up with notions, reading Nietzsche and all that as a teenager, that uh, I used to feel like, you know, it was clipping my wings, to, to quote another Bell X1 line. And I felt like, yeah, it, it was so constraining in some sense, but as I've grown older, I just, I, I love it. I love that. It's that connection. It's, it's that, that poppy in that bubble. And there's another story that comes to mind here, and it's it's of a, a friend of mine worked for a multinational in in Ireland, and this is a great illustration of the difference between the American psyche and the Irish psyche. So there was a two companies merging. So this multinational company were merging with another multinational company to form a massive multinational company. So he was invited to this party uh, down in another county, and so he went to the headquarters and they had this big TV screen up, and you could see the American side of the organization. And someone made a speech and then people were going mad, he told me. He told, like, people were really going crazy, kind of celebrating this. And it was as if they won some award themselves as individuals that they were so amped up and so pumped up. And <laughs> so he's talking about being at the, the Irish event and everyone is just like dour face, just like, what? This, this is, this is no effect on me. This is not, this is not my achievement at all. This is, there's no gain here for me. There's no, I didn't do this. Why, why would we be celebrating? And it's that authenticity of the Irish. And someone was trying to rile up the Irish. Come on, Ireland, I can't hear you. And it's just, they're just like, what? This is just like absurd. So the Irish are much more, um, 
grounded in that sense. There's none of those inflated notions that the the, the kind of is is so endemic in in American culture of this uh, this this no holds barred kind of self belief and manifestation and all that the, all these kind of notions that can lead to an, an inflated sense of self but can also lead to great success and in that American culture and whereas Ireland we we pop those bubbles you know there's there's not that much room for ego inflation in Ireland now there's plenty of ego inflations because we're not there's nothing special about us but there is that sense of there's something a little bit different about that and I feel like the British have this a lot as well you can see a difference in British and Irish humour versus American humour that it's it's so much more uh, self-effacing and almost melancholic in some sense down on itself that it's it's there's something honest and authentic about it which you know you just gotta love even though it's not perhaps as as upbeat and and happy eternally happy as that american mindset but it's it, there's something i don't know it's, it's very funny the the irish humor is, is very interesting and just that that is part of irish culture as a whole just that that image of it was such a, a an easy way of illustrating that difference between america and ireland of that yeah just no notions just like ah oh, this is not what why would i be celebrating and so i think it's that you see that connected in with bellex one that like that thing that you're the chocolate at the end of my cornetto. That's so, that's such a grounded, like, image that we can all relate to. And Kavanagh has a, another poem uh, addressed to an old wooden gate, which I, which I love, which I, again, I might do another episode on, but it's just, they're, they're such earthy things, things we can all relate to, which are eternal, which are authentic, because they're not joined into these notions of great, uh, cycling gyres of time and becoming eternalized in Byzantium, which you might see in, in a kind of a, a Yeatsian paradigm or even Joyce's audacity with what he does. It's, it's, that is an, another genuine part of the Irish soul, but it's this, it's, it's this earthiness, which I feel is, is more endemic to Ireland, is more indigenous here, and is, is such a, a genuine, authentic part of the Irish soul. So that's just what I wanted to explore in today's episode of The Living Philosophy. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please subscribe if you haven't already, and please don't forget to give us a, a thumbs up, and love to hear from you down in the comments. And yeah, I shall see you next time, guys. Thank you for watching.